Artificial intelligence has an energy problem. Indeed, if you listen to Donald Trump, then the United States has an energy emergency. Experts advise citizens to conserve energy by staying off Twitter until further notice. More seriously, one of the biggest tech hopes for clean energy has for a long time been nuclear fusion. And among the nuclear fusion startups, the one that's attracted the most attention is Helion Energy. Is that attention justified? Let's have a look. Helion Energy made headlines last week for raising another $425 million, which puts its total funding above a billion. Helion is a privately owned company. Its probably most famous backer is Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI. Helion was founded in 2013. In 2014, they wrote on their website that they aim to have a commercial plant operational in six years. Six years later, they still aim to have the plant operational in six years. Come 2022 and they want to get it done by 2024. The website now says that they want to get it done by 2028. Let me just say I'm a little skeptical. Helion uses an approach to fusion called field reversed configuration that, while not new, is only pursued by three startups Helion General Atomics and TEA Technologies. These field reversed devices are basically particle accelerators. You accelerate a bunch of fuel particles with magnets and then collide and compress them in the middle. That compression increases pressure and temperature and fuses the nuclei. The energy released on the fusion creates very fast moving particles. One then has to find some way to harvest that energy. To give you a sense of scale, nuclear fusion reactions typically take place in the range of 10 to 100 mega electron volt of energy per particle, about a million times less than the energy that the LHC uses, which is why the helium device is just a few meters long. What's special about the Helion approach is that they want to generate electricity directly from fast-moving charged particles in the plasma. You see, in approaches using magnetic confinement like ITER, one generates heat and the heat then has to be used to create electricity. This is also the case for inertial confinement, where one shoots at fuel pellets either with lasers or particle beams or solid bullets. This detour from nuclear energy to heat to electricity is far less efficient than going from the fast-moving particles directly to electricity. Helions is a pulsed approach, not a continuous one, and the fast-moving charged particles rapidly change the magnetic field which induces a current. So that's the advantage. The disadvantage is that the fast-moving particles need to be charged. Now, in the usual nuclear fusion reaction, one uses deuterium and tritium as fuel. This releases fast-moving neutrons. Yes, one also has charged particles, of course, because the electric charges need to go somewhere. But the fastest moving particle, that is neutral. So that doesn't help helion much. This is why helion, as the name suggests, wants to fuse helium-3 with deuterium. Because this releases a fast-moving proton, which is charged, and they can then extract the energy from that. Sounds good, but there's a reason why no one else uses helium-3 as a fuel for nuclear fusion. It's because the energy threshold is about four times higher. With that in mind, have a look at this 2021 press release from the Helion website. Helion Energy today became the first private company to announce exceeding 100 million degrees Celsius in their sixth fusion generator prototype, Trenta. Reaching this temperature is a critical engineering milestone as it's considered the ideal fuel temperature at which a commercial power plant would need to operate. Note how carefully they write that. It is considered the ideal fuel temperature and not that they consider it to be ideal. That's because it's considered a pretty good temperature for a reactor that runs on deuterium and tritium. 
for the helium fusion which they need, that's pretty low. There's also the question of where the helium-3 comes from, because that particular isotope is very rare on Earth. Helion wants to create the helium-3 from deuterium collisions, and while that's possible, it'll reduce the efficiency of the entire cycle. Finally, there's the general issue that the nuclear plasma motion can become unstable, which will lead to losses and also make net energy generation more difficult. Generally, the company has been very secretive. They have, for all I can tell, not published any technical reports, so really we have no idea what's going on. I've little doubt that they can generate nuclear fusion reactions in their devices, but I strongly doubt that they're anywhere near break-even. That leaves the question, why is this company in particular so extremely well-funded? Do the investors know something that we don't know? Is it re-engineered alien technology? Are they secretly building a portal to a parallel universe? Or is it maybe wishful thinking? Let me know which one of those you think is most plausible. Artificial intelligence is really everywhere these days. If you want to learn more about how neural networks and large language models work, I recommend you check out the courses on Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to know more about large language models or algebra, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.